with me this morning in your Bibles to Matthew chapter number 7. Matthew chapter number 7. And I will get there in a few moments. Keep your finger right there. Some of you may be familiar with a book that was written many years ago called Pilgrim's Progress. And uh, you remember Pilgrim, and he's symbolic of us as believers that we are on a pilgrimage from this land to an eternal destination, which would be heaven. And I know that it's very much an allegory, the book that's written. If you've ever read it, I'm sure that you would enjoy it. When I went to Christian school, it was a requirement that we read that uh, in our Paces ACE, if any of you did that. And so uh, you'll find that there's a picture that is given of that celestial city. It's beautiful. Uh, a land where there's green pastures and lush trees, and it's beautiful. And a, a painter painted that picture of that beautiful celestial city where everything looks so perfect and, and, and grand. But as the travelers were traveling there, they were getting ready to cross over the river that is the Jordan River that is symbolic of death. And uh, before you cross over the Jordan River, Brother David, there was also uh, just a couple people that was going to cross over the river. Sister Susan, there was lots of people that were headed toward a destination that was a fiery destination. Now, I know that we sometimes, uh, in, our, in our culture, folks don't like the, uh, the, uh, the part of thinking about an end destination that isn't so lovely. But the Word of God is specific that there is two eternal destinations that people will go to. And it will either be heaven or it will be hell. Heaven is a wonderful place, and, and uh, it is a place of rest, and it's a place of beauty. It's a place of eternal life, but hell is just out of the opposite. It is a place of destruction and fire and pain and eternal death for those who don't make a choice for Jesus being their Lord. And so uh, some folks may, may question, uh, uh, what is the reason why people would go to hell? And so, folks, they, I, I'm, I'm often asked this question, why would a loving God send people to hell? We live in a world that is affected by sin. And that's why we have lots of things. Sometimes I just have to not look at the news. I have to turn it off because deep in the pit of my stomach, it, 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 it bothers me. And so why do those things happen in our society that is so stomach churning and repulsive and just uh, uh, is, is beyond comprehension? It's because we live in a world that's affected by sin. And, and the enemy is out to destroy lives, to destroy souls, and even jade people and get them discouraged and, and their walk that they would become frustrated. God doesn't intend life to be that way, but because we live in a fallen world, it affects society that is affected by sin. And so uh, I want us to look at uh, something that this morning the Word of God calls the way. We basically choose our way. Aren't you glad God made us individuals of choice? Amen. Aren't you glad we didn't all get up this morning and wear some type of black garbage bag to church? Amen. That we have the choice of getting up and, and choosing what we wanted to wear because God gives us that ability of choice. And so... Uh, God gives us this ability to choose the way that we're going to live our life and the way that we'll end our life. God gives us that choice. And it's called the way. Way back in the book of Acts, you'll find that the New Testament people, uh, when, when before they were called Christians, at Antioch they were called Christians, and that's the first place that we find it. But if you go back in the book of Acts, you'll find that they were people that were called people of the way. They chose the way that they would live. They chose the way that they would end their, their destination for eternity. And so the Word of God tells us that there is one who gives us the choice. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have the ability to choose which way we're going to go. And Jesus gave us 
some magnificent information at that Sermon on the Mount here in the book of Matthew chapter number 7. I'm going to start reading verse number 13. Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. That means that it is narrow. I'll reference that again in a moment. Enter in at the narrow gate. Jesus is that gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be that find uh, uh, that, that go in there at or find them. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few there be that finds it. So Jesus said there are two doors. There is a narrow door, and uh, narrow is that way, straight is that way, and there's going to be few people that find it, but that door leads to heaven. On the opposite side of the pendulum is a wide gate. It's very broad, it's very wide, and Jesus said anyone can basically fit through. That's the way everyone's going. If they don't choose to get out of the rut, sometimes it's a velvet rut that's very comfortable, a comfortable way of living, a man that just lives by the flesh. But Jesus said, broad is that way, and many there be that find it. When we look at it, that word straight meaning narrow, Jesus was preaching uh, uh, the message, and he was telling, uh, uh, he was preaching to unbelievers. He was preaching to some very religious, strict believers. And he said, wait a second, you think you're living by the law was going to get you to heaven if you do this and if you do that, uh, but, but it's not going to work. There's only one way to get to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. And you've got to choose Him. Lots of people believe in Jesus. Yeah. Lots of people believe in God. In fact, the Word of God is specific in saying that even demons, they believe. Demons don't make it to heaven. Hell was created for the devil and his demons, not for people. And so, believing is not enough. It has to be a choice that I accept Jesus as my Savior. I accept Him as Lord of my life. And so, uh, uh, Jesus, He talks about uh, uh, people in, in, in the uh, 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 Sermon on the Mount. Uh, he talks about blessing and, and blessed or happier people who hunger and thirst after righteousness. That we need to be kingdom people that, that hunger for heaven. We need to be people of influence that influence other people to want to go to heaven. So it's not enough to be just religious and keeping rules. But we need to know that Jesus Christ has made a way for us and that we are to be perfect in Him. How do we be perfect? Some folks look in the mirror and see that they're perfect. Let me tell you, age will change that perfection. Oh, uh, I remember a young man who he used to always say, look at my muscles, look at this. And, well, I ran into him the other day, and let's just say he looks different than he used to look. Age has had a way of factoring into that. All right? And so uh, uh, his idea of perfect, but we're not to be perfect looking, but we're to be perfect on the inside, perfect as Christ has called us to be. And how can we be that way? By choosing Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, and choosing the narrow way. Uh, God wants us to choose that narrow way. It is a way of discipline. Let me just tell you, life should not be lived haphazardly. If we want anything in life, we've got to put a goal in front of us, and we've got to remember the goal. How many of you remember when you were in high school? Remember that you, you maybe didn't want to get up in the morning and go to school. I've never been a morning person ever. It's not changed from the time of my teenage years. However, I found that it's better to get up and utilize the morning that I can enjoy the evening much better. Just finding that, that schedule is better, right? So I, I, my parents used to tell me, just remember you want to graduate. It's necessary to graduate from high school. So that goal was always in front of me. I wanted to make good grades. I wanted to do well. Uh, even when I didn't feel like dragging myself out of bed, I did because there was a goal in front of me. And then there came that when I went to Bible college. I didn't really like being away from home, to be honest. I, I would have preferred just to stay at home, but God didn't call me to that. And so when I went to, uh, uh, to, to Bible school and, and getting up in the morning and all the routines, there was one thing that I had in my mind, and that was the day that I would graduate. 
Isn't that grand? I'd like to tell you that that was the last of, of, of my schooling, but two more times I went back to school, and, and, and I, I can't say that I've always enjoyed school. I've just looked to the end to know that I need to get there. And so whatever the requirements is, and getting that, that, that degree, getting that diploma, that's what I had to do to get there. I looked at the end goal. I believe that when we think about serving Christ, what draws us from the broad way to the narrow way is looking at the end result. Every day I have to remind myself that heaven is going to be worth the journey. Amen. Amen. Do I live in the moment? Yes, I live in the moment. I enjoy every moment. I believe God wants us to love life and the gift of life. And I believe that there's joy in serving God and joy in the presence of God. And we should enjoy March 18, 2018 to its fullest. And, and if God gives us March 18, 2025, we should enjoy it to its fullest. But I believe that we need to make sure that we're looking at the end goal because He keeps me in the straight and narrow way. Amen. Knowing that uh, in that way, uh, that there is a contrast between a truth and falsehood. And there's a contrast between evil and good. I said to you last week, the world knows all about evil and good. That's why we have Marvel movies. And that's why we have Superman and Batman and, and all those movies. Because the world knows that there is good and evil. But can I tell you that the truth this morning is this? That good and evil is this. That there is a war for your soul. The enemy wants it. The devil wants to destroy you. Because you've been created in God's image. And he wants relationship with you. He's created created you to worship Him. He's created you to live for Him. He's created you for an eternity with Him. And the enemy hates that. Because you are going to inhabit a place that you can never inhabit any longer. Because He rebelled against God. He was cast down into hell. And so the enemy wants to destroy your soul in hell. So He says, broad is the way. Just go with the flow. Go with anything that you feel like. Do what the flesh wants. And God says, if you want to make it to heaven, there's a different way. Narrow is the way that leads to life and life more abundantly. And it's all about a choice. Choosing. So there's a tale of two different destinations. A beautiful celestial city where there are streets of gold, where there are mansions, where there's rejoicing, where there's a marriage supper of the Lamb. But I need to tell you that the way that gets there is full of people uh, that, that have abundant life, but they are living righteously. They are living holy. They are living, Sister Tina, intentionally. Amen. There is peace and there is joy and there is life in the Holy Ghost. Sister Susan, you said it. I believe this, that we think about the Sabbath day, the seventh day being the day of rest. But when we enter into Jesus, every day is a day of rest. Why can I have peace when everything is going wrong? Because my rest is in Christ. And when other people, I want to tell you this morning, Brother, uh, Brother Eli, he lives across from, 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 from the local bar. I'll just say it that way. He said, man, I can't believe all the people that was over there yesterday on St. Patty's Day. Let me just tell you, they're not in rest today. Right. <laughs> they're not in rest today. And they, they took a broad way that said, let's have a moment of, uh, uh, of intoxication. Let's have a moment of feeling good. Let's have a moment of pleasing. But Jesus said, narrow is the way. The other place that we think about besides that celestial city Everyone will be experiencing the grace of the Lamb of God. But those who choose to go to Broadway will be experiencing the wrath of the Lamb of God. See, because everything about God is balanced. God is gracious. And God forgives. But the wrath of God, there's a penalty for those who don't choose to serve Him and love Him. I know that this is a tough message. It's not the type of message that 
Most secular churches are preaching because we don't like to make folks feel uncomfortable. But the truth is that God wants us to be very comfortable. But it's about our choice. Amen. If we choose to reject Him, we choose to reject comfort. But if we choose to accept Him, and today is the day of salvation, we choose to put that celestial city in our view, that someday I'm going to get there and because that's in my view, it changes everything about my life. That's why I love. That's why I live. That's why I forgive. That's why I, I, everything about my life is about a choice to see if God is honored in this. Does this allow Christ to be in? There's some jokes that Christ isn't allowed to be in because if they're filthy and dirty, Christ won't be there. He doesn't inhabit those places. And if it's places that's appeasing to the flesh and there's no room for the Spirit of God to move, then Christ is not there. So it's all about that choice. Jesus calls that place a place of destruction, a place of wasteland, a place of utter ruin. And it's really all about what we do in the here and now that will affect our here and later. God, help us to make good choices. I need to tell you that there's no purgatory. There's no annihilation. None of it aligns up with God's Word. There's no lim limbo. Uh, there's just two places. It's heaven and hell. And the people who inhabit these different places have two different doors that they walk through. Which door do you choose today? You see, the narrow way is like this. The gates of the city here in biblical times was like this, that the gate was closed at night. And there was a little door that was called an eye of a needle. You think about that? The eye of a needle. I found that, yeah, 40s have not been the best for my eyes. Any of you hit 40 and realize that your eyes seem to take a change? Yeah, praise God, I'm glad I'm not alone. And so sometimes the eye of a needle isn't so easy. Not that I do a lot of sewing, okay? Uh, but, but, but trying to get the eye of the needle isn't so easy, you know. Uh, I find sometimes my arms aren't long enough. But even with good eyes, it takes diligence to get that thread through the eye of a needle. And so uh, the Word of God talks about getting to heaven is like this. It's going through the eye of the needle. If they wanted to get themselves and their camel through, all the baggage, everything else had to come off so that they could make their way through this very narrow passageway. And Jesus said this, if you're going to make it to heaven, all the other baggage has to get off. Amen. You have to leave it outside because uh, there's no room for that baggage. Uh, uh, unforgiveness, jealousy. Uh, the things of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all that has to be left outside so that we can make it through the door, so that we can make it to a place that is restful, that is peaceful, and is secure. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, have you left the baggage outside the walls of the city? If you haven't, you're going to live on the outside looking in. And eternity is too long to be found. <laughs> <clears throat> you may say, Pastor, I don't understand. If God is a loving God, why does the Word of God say that broad is the way many there be, but narrow is the way that leads to life eternal, and few there be that finds it? In the Word of God, we find that it's consistent that there's always few who find it. Do you remember uh, when Elijah... He began to pray to God. He said, God, I feel like I'm all alone. Here I am in the middle of millions. And God said, you're not alone, Elijah. There are still uh, 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. It seemed like such a small number versus the millions, Sister Jenny. Just 7,000 out of millions. Yes, but God always has a remnant. And then we think about Sodom and Gomorrah, that city that God destroyed. God didn't want to destroy the city, but it was only four that were spared from the city. It was lost. God, his wife and his two daughters, the angels came and took them out. Just a few. How about Noah and his ark? We know that story, right? Here it is. God looks down at the world and the world is living wickedly and they forget all about God. Wow, that almost sounds like today. 
The Bible says that God spared eight by the building of an ark. There's always a few. I'd like to tell you that in eternity, all of humanity will have in heaven. The few will be the find it. Do I believe that there'll be tens of millions? Yes. But what is that versus billions and billions of people? God chose to save the whole world, but only few choose to serve Him. He said that He was the way and He was the truth and He was the light. You see, there are two ways, and there's the broad way. That's the permissive way. That's the accommodating way. But then there's also the narrow way. That is the way that Christ calls us to. Amen. Where the flesh is uncomfortable, when our heart is given to God. Two choices. Two gates, two choices. And everyone makes their choice. I want to ask you this morning, what is your choice? What is your choice? Have you chose the narrow way? See, there's a doctrine called Calvinism. Calvinism says this. Let me just say, I don't believe in Calvinism. I don't think it lines up with the, the doctrine of God's word from finish to end that we have. Calvinism says this, that God just chooses a few select people to be saved. That's a doctrine that I believe is very damnable. I think that's a doctrine that is very unscriptural. Because the Word of God says this, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that choice is to everyone, but it all boils down to a choice, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It is the choice this morning. It is up to us. What will you choose? The narrow way that says, I'm going to put my own life aside, and I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to put my own fleshly desires. You know, inside of us, we like revenge, don't we? But the Word of God says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. We don't need to repay anybody for anything. What our responsibility is, is to love God and to love others as we love ourselves. And let God take care of all the details. That is our ticket to heaven. The Word of God, when Jesus was asked, What is the greatest of all the commandments? He said, To love the Lord thy God with all all that heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the golden rule and that is our ticket to heaven. When well, we love God more than anything else, we love God more than our own life. I saw this morning on the news that there is a man, uh, I will, and I better not say the country because I forget, he is being imprisoned as a missionary up to life. Do you know what? He loves God more than he loves his own. So this morning, I believe the Lord's encouraged us in our sermon, in mean, our service already. Now I want to put a damn point up with the message, but I've got to be honest. What is your choice for eternity? I deal with folks all week long. There's not a week that I don't go by that someone doesn't contact me and I don't deal with a family who lost a loved one. And I will always honor and I'll respect a person because I believe that we should we should do that, especially for families. But if someone doesn't know the Lord, it's a very grim hope for people on this side of eternity. Make sure your eternal destination is secure. Don't just go with the flow that goes to the broad way that leads to destruction. But be intentional in choosing the narrow way that leads to life everlasting. If my wife would come to the piano this morning. If you were to travel to the Persian Gulf this morning, you would find that there's, a, there's an area called the Strait Hormuz. And that is an area in which the ocean gets very, very narrow. In fact, I'm told that there is only one lane per ship in the stretch of, of ocean that the, the, the ocean liners can go by each other one at a time. It actually is the area in which 
one third of the world's oil is delivered through that stretch. But they know that that is the way to get oil to the places where it needs to be. Energy, the things that need to be, need to go down that stretch. Can I tell you that Christ has given us that same strength? That there's only one way, and it's narrow. But it is the place that provides the resources for life and life evermore. As two little girls would settle here with every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. I'm not going to ask you to lift your hand or make a confession to me this morning, but I'm going to ask you to dig, dig deep in your soul. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Are you living life intentional with heaven in your view? Or are you just gliding down that very broad way? The broad way is easy, the broad way is comfortable, but the broad way leads to death and destruction and wasteland. This morning there's a narrow way that's calling out that says get rid of all the baggage of life and enter in at the straight gate. For narrow is the way that leads to life. I choose life this morning, don't you? I choose to go the narrow way. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, I believe that Christ is calling from the narrow way. Come to the narrow way. Few there be that find it. But there is life everlasting here. It starts by asking Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you of all your sins. And accept the work of Christ upon the cross. That's the narrow way. To allow baggage of life to be put to the side. That's the way this morning. Would you be part of the few that find it? Some of the pastors said to you that find that that's what Christ has said. Traditions and law will not allow you to get there. Living by the flesh will not allow you to get there. But living as Christ has called us to live will get us to the narrow way. And then all over the sanctuary this morning, as you evaluated your heart, would you make your way to the altar and make sure that you're on the narrow way? Amen. Would you give everything to Christ? Everyone that will, would you just come and find a place around the altar? Say, here I am, Jesus. I'm entering in at the narrow way. Let's get ready this morning.